I acknowledge the traditional owners, the Gadigal people of the Eora Nation, the traditional owners of the land on which we are gathered tonight, to their leaders, past, present, and emerging. What a turnout. Thank you so much for coming. I thought we deserved to give ourselves a birthday party. Not just for us, but also for the people that we need to remember. So tonight is that night. I've got a lot of people to thank. And there's a very high probability that I'm going to forget people. So I've taken out an insurance policy in the form of a postcard, a green postcard that's within your bags. And the invitation is that for anyone that I forget, please let me know. We're going to add it to the official Modant website. And, uh, and there'll be a facility which we'll arrange where you can drop it on, in a bag on the end, at the end of the night on the way out. So, um, with that caveat, um, to the Minister, the Honourable Paul Fletcher, Minister for Communication, Cyber Safety and the Arts, Shadow Assistant Mini, Minister Tim Watts, <coughs> distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. Tonight is a very special night. As we sit here celebrating 30 years of the internet in Australia, we can rest assured that all over the nation, people are enjoying the fruits of a long tradition. A tradition that didn't originate in Australia, actually in America. Nevertheless, one that has captured the imagination of all of us. Uh, it spawned an industry, and of that industry, many offshoots. Uh, and like all phenomena that take hold of the public imagination, the overwhelming effect is very positive. But of course, with all revolutions, there is a downside. And we're not going to shy away from acknowledging the fact that there is a dark side, and, and in some cases there can be overindulgence, and even in the young cases of addiction. And of course, I'm referring to Halloween <laughs> and the sugar industry, who's also rejoicing tonight at this amazing revolution that has captured the imagination of Australia. On that note, I have a few apologies, one being from the, minister, the uh, Commissioner for Cyber Safety, Julian and Grant, who being an American, is doing the reasonable thing and monitoring her own children's sugar consumption. Um, the retired Justice of the High Court, Michael Kirby, who had, has been at these occasions before, and who I was again privileged to speak to about a month ago, and I, I don't know if you've seen the interview, but he made a few very pointed comments. Uh, the first one actually was that he chastised us at the last event that he spoke at here in 2008, when he said how disappointed he was there were so few women, women in the audience. And, uh, and he really was giving us a signal that he expected more of the industry. And so I'm very pleased to say tonight, just looking around, and we have, we'll have video evidence to corroborate that, that we've probably got at least 30% female attendance, and it could even be higher, and we will do an official count of that. So congratulations. official celebration, I thought, well, maybe, you know, it's time we did something. And of course, I consulted my trusted friend and, and dog, Carlo, 
So I played an executionist for you, he's a very astute animal, and I said to him, what do you think the chances are that we could pull this off? And his response was to say, well, if you can get enough people to support you, I think it'll probably work. But he said, of course, I can't possibly be involved. And I said, why not? And he said, well, because on the internet, everyone thinks I'm a human. <laughs> The shaggy dog story. That's it. That, that was the entertainment for tonight. <laughs> I wanted to focus on uh, what, what inspired me very early on in um, my involvement with the industry was the human dimension of the internet. And I think in 2001, I've got it, or 2002 in fact, a friend of mine called James Prineas put together a website. In fact, it was more than a website. It was a, it was a fully fledged internet portal well before the advent of social media, where he attempted to create a cultural repository of the history, the archaeology, the natural history, the genealogy of an island in Greece called Githida, which is actually the, my ancestral island on my parents, um, on my father's side. And this portal still exists today and it has thousands of users. It's, it's trilingual, and it, even from the inception it was trilingual. Uh, and you can search, and the, the thing that was significant about it was that 2002, he created a facility where people could upload their own content. They could put their own histories on there and, and it is an amazingly deep and rich site. But the thing that struck me, and we had the launch in 2003, I think it was, just after the site launched, and there were about this many people in the room and they were the diaspora from this island, a very ancient island that uh, is mentioned in Homer and, and was featured in the Peloponnesian War. So it's of great significance. But the thing that, that struck me more than anything was that sitting there in front of that group of people that were looking at photographs like this, there were men in the front row, 90-year-old men with walking sticks, with their eyes filling with tears as they recognised people that they hadn't seen for 75 years since their childhood. And it struck me that the power of the internet to unite communities that have been separated by space and time was a very highly profound, uh, significant and profound moment for me and it really brought home the fact that the thing about the technology, which of course we will celebrate and recognise tonight, is not the technology per se, but the profound and transformative effect that it can have on humanity to bring us, to unite us together as a common people on a, on a common planet. Um, a second uh, anecdote that I will share occurred in 2000, actually around the time of the Olympic Games, you might remember a blind man called Bruce Maguire yes. made a complaint to the Human Rights and Equal Opportunities Commission <coughs> about the fact that as a blind man he could not access the official so-called, or, or the Olympic website. And the reason was that the way the site had been developed didn't follow the protocols around disability access, and he was using a, a, te a, a text-to-speech reader that would be converting things that he couldn't read with his eyes into things that he could still apprehend. And so he thought there was a legitimate basis for a complaint, and in fact it was upheld by the Human Rights and Equal Opportunity Commission and became a very profound, I think, signal to the industry that more needed to be done to create an internet that was more inclusive. And as a result of that decision, we actually went and met with Bruce Maguire and Sandra Davey, that's sitting on the EMEA table, who was then running EMEA, which was the sister organisation to the Internet Industry Association, which I was running at the time. We agreed together to do some work in the area to try and raise the awareness around, you know, creating an internet that was accessible for all. And what was very poignant, and we created a task force and we created an action plan, and we actually, I think, tried to get the message out that, that this issue of inclusiveness was going to be a powerful driver in the way that we shape the usage of the technology moving forward. And then another interesting thing happened that was allied to this, and there was a man that ran the sister organisation to the AAA in America, and his name was Dennis Hayes. And in fact, he was the inventor of the PC modem that enabled PCs to connect to the internet. So in, in every respect, he could be considered a pioneer. 
and I had the fortune to meet Dennis a few times um, and he explained how it was to innovate oh, actually on his dining room table. It was one of those classic startup stories where he sat down with another man called Dale Hetherington, a friend of his, and they developed the protocols by which modems could connect PCs to other modems and therefore to other PCs. Uh, that's right. PC, modem, modem, PC. Now, that is an interesting story in itself, but I think it gets more interesting when I found out that Dennis was beginning to suffer from macular degeneration and was himself losing his eyesight and was complaining of the very same thing that we'd seen in Australia where he was increasingly unable to utilise the medium that in, in many respects you could argue he hoped to, to bring to popularise. And so when he came to Australia we managed to utilise that story as a further, uh, to add further momentum to the kind of work we were doing. So I just wanted to share those things to, to really amplify the need to remember our common humanity as we move forward in the development of this amazing medium. The aim of tonight is to do just that. So we're going to remember the technical pioneers, and I'm very, very happy that we've got with us tonight some of the technical pioneers. Uh, we've got Professor Bob Hammerfeld and Piers Lauder from the University of Sydney, and we've got Ian Peter, who was the founder of uh, the first commercial ISP in Australia, Pegasus. And I know that that may be slightly contested by the people in Western Australia that had wakes, uh, sorry, um, dialects. And in fact, when I first connected to the net in 89 in Perth, I was and using the bulletin board with a, what it was a very slow modem by today's standards. Uh, again, the profundity of the experience was really not lost. I'd like to thank a number of people uh, that really moved in very quickly to support the vision for tonight's event. And I'd like to thank, in particular, David Spence, and Chris, and Chris Hancock now these guys served as former chairman of the Internet Industry Association and were very supportive of me at the time but when I approached them this year three months ago and said look what do you think about this they said you have to do it and they, they stepped up and they took tables and they called their friends and the result is in part what we're seeing tonight. I'd like to thank the volunteers and the other people that have helped me organise this event. So um, to my partner, Kalyani, who kept me on task. <laughs> Gina Panna, who's actually Michael Malone's assistant, and Michael would kindly, kindly lent me some of Gina's time and she's been responsible for some of the graphics that you see and a lot of the organisation behind the scenes. So thank you so much. And to Angela Stevens, who was uh, the mover and shaker behind a lot of the calls and the development of spreadsheets and the ability to monitor who was coming and who was not. The fact that I think everyone has a seat tonight is a tribute to her organisational skills. So thank you, Angela. And to all the volunteers that have come to today to help us on the, on the eve of this great celebration, I thank you as well. Um, Natasha and Louise and the other Louise, and Krish from Melbourne who came for this, and Stephen Che from IBM, all of you, thank you. Now, just before I introduce the Minister, Paul Fletcher, to come and give the opening of the welcome from the government, I do want to acknowledge a couple of things. It's been impressed upon me not to forget the volunteers, the people that are the unsung heroes of the internet. So we can name and identify some of the technical heroes. But it's very, very hard to identify the people that uh, worked behind the scenes, doing the voluntary work, doing, going to the committee meetings, helping shape the technical standards, or maybe even some of the, the policy work that we now enjoy the fruits of. So without knowing who the, all those people are, I think we at least want to acknowledge their existence and the role that they've played. So to the volunteers. Uh, 
uh, to the industry associations, and I mean, you know my background, but we never worked alone, and there are other associations that are here tonight that I specifically made a point of inviting in recognition that this has been a shared enterprise, and it's always a very difficult thing to represent an industry in its totality, and so the various associations all perform complementary, in some cases overlapping roles, but they are representing their own constituencies, they're representing uh, their own particular areas of expertise within that constituency and the social issues in which they're engaged and the technical issues. And so I think to all those associations, and I've listed them in the little souvenir uh, guide tonight, I won't say them all now, but many of them are here and to those that are here through individual representatives, I thank you and acknowledge you all. And the fallen are the people that are no longer with us, and, and we will be toasting them. But I want to mention them by name. And if they were with us now, they would be here. I'm certain of that. But my, to my friend and colleague, Dave McClure, who ran the US Internet Industry Association, passed away about three years ago. To Phil Alexander, who was on the board of the AAA and is known and loved by many people that we know. Michael Ward formerly of Aussie Mail, which we, many of you would know, and he also ran the Australian Republican Movement, which is where I first met him, to Mike Rothery from the Attorney General's Department, who is a very towering figure within the history of um, yes, uh, the, the um, emergency response <coughs> paradigm and his profound knowledge and understanding and leadership. And Alistair, you acknowledge that as well. Uh, to um, Barry Hall of Telstra, a very humble man, a very dear friend of many in the industry that did a lot of quiet work behind the scenes to help promote, in particular, cyber security. We acknowledge him and miss him. Brenda Ainsley, who many of you know was pioneering within the Australian Computer Society, was one of the first women, women in a leadership role there. And to Ian Burks, who ran the AAA as their chief executive, all these people were very beautiful people. They were good, you know the saying, only the good die young? These were good people, and I'm really sad that they're not here. I hope at some level they can feel our thanks for them. Uh, and then there's the person in the box. The people, that, again, that we don't know, that we don't remember, that have come and gone, that will remain unsung, but at least we can recognise them in a symbolic oh, gesture. Of thanks. Chris Winter! Chris Winter, thank you. Well, put, please put on the postcard, and we'll add that to the letter. Um, and then finally, of course, uh, I've said the volunteers through our sponsors, without whom this could not have occurred. So to Superloop, Arnet, Cisco, Palo Alto Networks, Encrypt Cellular, and to our official media partners, IT Wire, Andrew Madler, uh, My Security Media and Chris Covich, and our colleagues in America that run the Cyberwire. Uh, thank you to all of you. been a much longer opening speech than I'd planned, but I'm just covering myself and sure, making sure that we really don't overlook it. I'd like to now invite the Minister, the Honourable Paul Fletcher, Minister for Communication, Cyber Safety and the Arts, to come up and give the official government welcome and address. Thank you very much, Peter, and looking around the room, what an amazing Rolodex Peter Coronius has. Would you all thank Peter Coronius for organising this moment? Well, friends, it is hard to think of one single force or phenomenon that has affected our nation over the last 30 years as much as the arrival of the internet. It has been a very profound force. It has comprehensively changed, when you run down the list, the list is extraordinary. It's changed the way that we buy and sell cars and homes. It's changed the way that we search for jobs. It's changed the way that we find and read books, the way that we access and listen to music, the way that we choose a route when we're walking or driving, the way that we bank and transact, the way that we book accommodation, the way that we travel. 
the way that we book restaurants. It's changed the way we find partners for life or for one night. It's changed the way that we find information. It's changed the way that we record, store and transport data. It's changed the way that we keep public records. It's changed the way that we control large infrastructure and utility systems. It's changed the way that we carry voice telephony. It's changed the way that we track animals on farms. It's changed the way that we access collections in libraries. It's changed the way that we research family history. It's changed the way that we find recipes, that we gather investment information, that we promote ourselves, our businesses, our causes, that we keep in touch with friends and families. It's changed fundamentally the way we do just about everything. And I don't think any of that was anticipated in 1989 when that first 56 kilobit per second link was set up between Australia and Hawaii. So it was of course a physical and a technical platform that was being established in a very tentative way back in 1989, built on the basic protocols that the internet relies on. And of course, at first the internet in Australia and globally was mainly a specialised resource for academic and scientific communities, but it exploded into mainstream use. You know, the term exponential growth is widely overused, but there is no industry of which that term could be more accurately used than the internet, both here in Australia and globally. And of course, one thing that was very important about the internet in Australia, that's not part of the story of the internet in the US, is that a way, the way that it broke down our isolation, the way that it broke down the tyranny of distance, and the fact that in industry after industry where Australian consumers were frankly used to putting up with pretty second-rate service and products and quality, suddenly you could buy the best that the world offered. So the internet has profoundly transformed Australia in a way that our, friend, our friends in the US don't quite understand, that the force of of the internet and its economic significance and its social significance. So this is absolutely worth something acknowledging, celebrating, marking this 30 year anniversary. And there's so many people in this room who've played an important part in that. And of course, we need to acknowledge the computer scientists and the academics and so many folks in the university and research community who first saw something that the rest of us didn't appreciate at the time. Uh, we need to acknowledge those who founded internet service providers, including in the early days when essentially they were themselves refugees from computer science departments wanting to hold on to that connectivity. <laughs> we need to acknowledge the telcos, which played an important role <coughs> in taking what had been something only used in small communities, research and specialist communities, and making it available. And we do need to acknowledge the marketers and the business people who were so important in taking the internet in Australia and globally from being something for the early adopters to being something for absolutely the mass market. And you notice I haven't even mentioned the lawyers and the policy people, I won't do that. <laughs> so, ladies and gentlemen, uh, the, the change that we've seen in 30 years has been phenomenal. And when you think about it, it's been reinforced by a range of other factors. I think this was more luck than management. But at the same time as the technological breakthroughs that made the internet possible, over that same period, we saw a range of other forces, certainly here in Australia and some of them global as well. We saw the deregulation of telecommunications, which helped take the internet into the mass market. Had we still had Telecom Australia as a government-owned entity, uh, I think it might have been a longer and more tortuous journey. Uh, of course, we saw deregulation in other industries like banking or airlines, which also really drove the way that the internet underpinned, for example, how we, um, how we now book travel and, um, and air tickets. Uh, we saw, of course, the explosion in mobile technology. And so many Australians now see the mobile device as the way they access the internet. Many people, in fact, see mobiles and the internet as synonymous. Uh, and so if we hadn't seen the explosion in mobile technology, would we have seen the internet become the pervasive force that it is today? And I think one other thing that we've seen over the last 30 years in Australia that's been part of the growth of the internet as well has been the extraordinary increase in the percentage of people uh, who are undergoing or have completed tertiary education. So I think a whole range of forces have come together, some of them quite serendipitously, 
to absolutely transform the way we live. So, ladies and gentlemen, I think we all, the moment we got the uh, invitation to this event, thought, yes, this is something absolutely worth celebrating, worth acknowledging. This is a significant milestone. So congratulations, everybody in the room, for your involvement in what's been done. I'm now going to invite David Spence to come up and give the vote of thanks to the Minister. And before he takes the podium, I do want to acknowledge an omission that Responsible Technology Australia, who will be launching here tonight, is the major sponsor for tonight's event, and we'll be hearing from them after the main course. Uh, so thank you guys. I'm sorry I, I left it wasn't the logo wasn't on the slide, and of course without the visual. Okay, well, we'll take that offline. <laughs> And the other one is to make a toast to you, the industry, as in each of you, as I've never made a toast to the industry all. So, Minister, thank you very much for tonight. Um, I'll just say that the Minister, I'm in the Minister's electorate and he's doing a great job there. And please keep it up, Minister, and we'll keep voting for you. <laughs> um, that was very impressive, how, and I it's certainly something we need to take away is how the tyranny of distance has changed because of the internet coming to Australia and how it has made Australia a much closer part of the world. So thank you, Minister, for that. It is great to have a Minister that's been in this industry nearly as long as I have, or probably the same amount of time that I have, and who has stuck to this industry through all the various roles that he's had. Um, we now have a Minister who has the huge task of making sure we too much tech rig doesn't come our way and we don't have a tech rig. Um, we will have a minister who knows the industry and knows what it means to look after this industry. Um, certainly, minister, it's in your hands now for the next couple of years, we know. So it's all up to you. And thank you again for coming tonight. Now, <laughs> to the pioneers, the fallen heroes that were listed in this book, to some friends who, who, have, who can't make it tonight because of cancer, um, especially Ian McGregor, uh, to those who've helped create, sustain, and really push this revolution in Australia, which we call the internet, to the policy wonks, to the technocrats, the political operates, operators, and I'll even say the lawyers, Peter, I've seen you in the room, and Patrick Fair, uh, well done, keeping us all in line over the years. Um, the early adopters, especially the high-end users that helped drive the growth in the early days and dragged everybody along behind them. This is a community with many different perspectives, but a common vision to see the internet develop to its full potential in this country and empower a safe and open and secure communications revolution, driving productivity and output for this nation. So ladies and gentlemen, a toast to the internet. Thank you.